From the days of the Greeks to through the 16th century, Africa has always been a place of wonder for Europeans. They've seen it as a place of great empires of uh, very wealthy and wise men, a place of wealth. Uh, parrot the idea of a noble, the noble savage, which um, appeared in the during the time of the what do you call it, industrial revolution was. Africa was seen as a utopia. Of course, many Europeans felt didn't feel this way. They felt some of them were more ethnocentric, but there were different ideas in these periods. For example, many Western uh, philo mis many philosophers uh, looked at non-Europeans uh, as um, people with the virtues of primitive children and nature and a perfect state of ha happiness such as novelists who idealize the Native Americans also um, Chinese culture I've read and I don't remember which philosopher but they were uh, highly idealized in the same period um, Europe was going through the hectic um, modernization of the Industrial Revolution. One writer named John Ogilby uh, wrote that the West African kingdoms were, quote, Monaco, living under laws, orders, and princes. The remainder were but the remainder of Africa were swayed on all occasions like tumultuous herds and at other times like tame cattle feeding and following the idle pastures unquote so you see we the stereotypes we have in Europe are everything from the evil savage to the noble savage to the sophisticated kingdoms that rival the uh, European cities of Venice of course it would be the evil savage that would be the stereotype that would uh, be most helpful to the Europeans in driving the slave trade. And I got most of this information from that I just present from headlines in history in the 1400s, which mostly focuses on Europe, but it deals with other cultures. I'm going to start off by giving some less flattering accounts of West Africa. Ibn Battuta, the Berber who uh, traveled during the 1352, I've, I learned that not all of his descriptions were uh, glowing of uh, describing um, Mali, which at this time was supreme in the area. On his way south, Ibn Battuta paused at, a, uh, at the salt city of Tokhaza. And as you can see the state of the city, this is probably where we get working at the salt mines from because it doesn't sound like a good job to have. What he described as an attractive village, an unattractive village, with the curious feature that its houses and mosques are built of blocks of salt rough with camel skins. There are no trees, nothing but sand. And the sand is a salt mine. They dig for the salt and find it in thick slabs lying on the top of the other, as though they had been tool squared and laid under the surface of the earth. Another story, I'll read it from the book. South of the Sahara, Ibn Battuta stayed for a time in the market city of Walada and the northern border of the Mali Empire. He found the people strange and their manners often deplorable. He was deeply upset, or so he claimed, by the freedom of the physical relations that existed between the sexes. The women there, he wrote, have friends and companions amongst the men outside their families, and the men in the same way have companions amongst the women 
of other families. One day in Walata, I went into the judge's house after asking his permission and found him with a young woman of remarkable beauty. I was shocked and turned to go out, but the judge said to me, Why are you going out? She is my companion. I was amazed, for he was a the theologian and a pilgrim to boot. And another part of the book is, talks about how the rulers of Mali converted Islam in the 11th century. But the Arab travelers of three centuries later found their religion somewhat altered. The visitors were shocked to discover that many women, even the Sultan's daughters, not only went, were unviled, but apparent, appeared stark naked in public. I can also read you the all the positive things he had to say, and he had mostly very positive things to say. But all the quotes in this book are also in the website that I'll have linked up and the movie that I'll have linked up. So I won't bother reading those to you. Concerning the ancient empire of Ghana, in 1066, an Arab geographer named al Bakra compiled a book called Roads uh, and Kingdoms. In it, he set down an account of the court of the king of Ghana. He says, when the king gives an audience to his people in order to listen to their complaints and set them right, he, he sits in a pavilion around which stand ten horses with golden bridled trappings. Behind the king stands ten pages holding shields and gold mounted swords. On his right are the sons of princes at, of his empire, splendidly clad with gold plated in their hair. The door of the pavilion is guarded by dogs of an excellent breed who almost never leave the king's presence and who wear collars of gold and silver. al Bakra also mentions in his book of Worlds and Kingdoms that uh, Awaga Dust, or however you pronounce it, and Ghana was a very large city with several markets, many date palms, and henna trees as large as olive trees, filled with fine houses and solid buildings. And he also spoke very enthusiastically about the times of the women. The accounts and statistics of his book have been confirmed by archaeologists. For example, the distances he gives between cities and markets have been shown to be very accurate. And indeed, archaeologists have found a number of uh, well, fine stone houses, uh, many two stories high. The great city in this picture is Timbuktu. And this city uh, so captivated the uh, Europeans from Tales of Travelers that this is where we get from here to Timbuktu from, the old saying. And a lot of the Europeans' go goods came here. For example, the king wore European silks. Some of the books written here actually um, had a classical authority, gained a classical authority. And um, it was such a center of learning that it was remarked the book trade here provided a better source of profit than any other source of commerce. This is this would be Europe's first glimpse of West Africa, and it would be it's the uh, king's um, ability to control trade so well that led to the success of West Africa. I'll finish this in the next video I make.